Hi, today's Pixelmator tutorial is on the photo album collage effect. Here are some examples of this effect that I found during an internet search that were created in Photoshop. As you can see, most involve using an old Polaroid style or a simple white stroke for the frame. So, I decided to add a little flair to a very interesting effect using, of course, Pixelmator. Here are just a few of what I came up with. As you can see, I employed Apple products. Here we have the iPhone, an iPad, and another iPad. I challenge you to employ your imagination and your artistic side when you utilize this technique on your own project. Let's go ahead and get started. For this tutorial, I decided to use something a little bit different other than just your standard Polaroid type frame or your standard white stroke frame or the Apple products. So for this one, I decided to use an old wood frame. So let's go ahead and open this up in Pixelmator and let me kind of show you where I started. I found this photograph of this old wooden frame and I decided this is what I wanted to use. Unfortunately, it had this black background, so we have to take this out. In doing so, I utilized the magic wand tool and I just selected the background and then I deleted it and now we're left with a transparent background and then I did the same on the inside of the frame but you must hold down the shift key to add the selection now I'm left with this little wire across here so let's deselect our selection let's go ahead and grab the eraser tool and we'll just simply erase this out. Now that we have our picture frame, let's go ahead and save this so that we can use it later. Let's go to Share, Export, and we'll export this as a JPEG. Now since I've already saved this, I won't go through this process. Now that we have our frame prepared, Let's go ahead and work on a foreground, and you'll understand what I mean by that in a moment. I was in a little bit of a grungy, splattery mood, so I created this somewhat black and white and gray toned uh, foreground. Okay, so what I mean by foreground is that this is actually going to be the foreground image, and we're going to be looking through this to a background image. Now I know this says background layer. Let's go ahead and change this to foreground. Now we need to consider what our background is going to be. I really like this photograph of this little African tree with a sunset. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this into our image here. Okay, now this tree is actually now going to become our background layer. So let's add, let's rename this background. And of course, the last component to this overall image will be the frame that we worked on earlier. Well, let's go ahead and drag that into this image. Now this frame layer must be between my foreground and my background. Let's go ahead and turn this background layer off for the time being. Let's select our wooden frame and our move tool. And let's go ahead and resize this a little bit to make it a little bit more useful for us. I say about right there. And then, of course, we click OK. 
Okay, next, let's add a new layer. Let's go ahead and turn off this background layer. Now we have to create a black background inside this picture frame. And the best way to do that at this point in time is to select your magic wand tool and then select this inner area. Once you have a selection made, make sure you highlighted your new layer and let's go ahead and fill this with black. Since I don't have black selected, and of course Command D to deselect. Now we want these two layers to interact with one another. So let's go ahead and use Shift and we'll select both of these layers and then we're going to link them together. After we've linked these together we can go ahead and turn on both the background and the foreground and now the magic will happen. We go to the background layer and we add a clipping mask. And now, over here we have our frame, our foreground, and we have our background showing through the frame. Choose the Move tool and select the black layer here. And since these two are linked, now we can move this frame pretty much anywhere and we can reveal the background image and the frame in the foreground. Now we're ready to duplicate these layers to get multiple frames on our foreground. So let's go ahead and we're going to group the background, the black layer, and the wooden frame. Now once we have these grouped, let's go ahead and duplicate this. I also suggest that you go ahead and make all your duplicates at this time. So I say, let's use, we're going to use four frames in our image here. Okay. So now then, we go back to our first group that we created. We click on this black layer, and we can see here that we're still linked. So let's go ahead and move this one, say, to this side for now. Okay. We go up here. To the layer above that, we click on this black one and we notice here that we're not linked. So let's go ahead and link these two. For some reason the link doesn't get carried over in the duplication process. So now that we have these linked, highlight this black layer and then we'll move it say to here for now. And then we're just going to repeat this process. Make sure that they're linked. Highlight the black layer and then move it. Okay, now it's just a matter of repositioning the frames in a manner that we want. Let's go up here to the action button and select free transform. Now then we can rotate this one pretty much any way we want it to. And we can move it and adjust it but we can also do that later. Once we're done transforming go ahead and click OK. Again, we'll go to the layer above it to this one. Go to our action menu, transform Let's rotate that one just a little bit that way. Click OK. Go to the next layer. Action button, transform. Hmm, let's see. Let's make this one go that way. Maybe a little bit more. OK. And lastly, let's do this one. That looks pretty good.
Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Um, they're a little off center, but I could go ahead and crop this image if I needed to to kind of center everything up. I pretty much like the overall effect. I especially like the contrast between the colorful background and the black and white foreground. The picture frames tend to blend a little bit into the foreground, but it was a little bit of oversight on my part. Well, that's about it. You get the general idea. Again, as I said earlier, please use your imagination and your own artistic side when you utilize this technique to create your own projects. Thanks for watching and have a great day.